Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. It's been a while since I had the pleasure of talking about Amazon's complete bastardization of J.R.R. Tolkien's immortal Middle Earth with their abominable show, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Amazon spent a huge amount of money to get the rights to the actual Lord of the Rings from the Tolkien estate, which was only months after Christopher Tolkien had stepped down as its director on August 31st, 2017, at the age of 93. It was a position that he held for almost exactly 44 years from the time his father, J.R.R. Tolkien, had died on September 2nd, 1973. After stepping down, Christopher died two and a half years later on January 16th, 2020, at the age of 95. So he was spared the horror of having to see how much Amazon had bastardized his father's immortal works, which Amazon obtained the rights to in November 2017, only three months after Christopher Tolkien had resigned. The Rings of Power is nothing more than a load of terrible fan fiction written by J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, who had absolutely no prior experience as being showrunners prior to this, let alone for a show that's costing upwards of $750 million to produce. They claimed in early 2022 that they were writing the novel Tolkien never wrote with their disgusting Rings of Power series. And that was actually a true statement, given that Tolkien was a brilliant writer and would never have written the kind of mind-numbing bilge that J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay wrote. Then, last October, J.D. Payne went so far as to describe anyone who dared to criticize the rings of power as being patently evil. And if he views me as being patently evil, maybe he now views the rest of Hollywood as being patently evil since the Emmys have now rightfully snubbed Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. (laughs) With the exception of at least one, fantasy dramas made a surprisingly strong showing in this year's Emmy nominations, with several titles scoring in the top series categories. HBO's House of the Dragon and The Last of Us and Disney Plus's Andor all landed a nomination for Outstanding Drama Series. Netflix's Wednesday was nominated for Outstanding Comedy Series, and Disney Plus's Obi-Wan Kenobi earned a nomination for Outstanding Limited Series. And having watched Obi-Wan Kenobi myself, I can truthfully say that it did not deserve that nomination. It's almost certainly unprecedented for five fantasy titles to get Emmy nominations in the Outstanding Series categories. On the acting side, too, a few of the show's stars broke through, though not as many as fans had hoped. The Last of Us star Bella Ramsey was nominated for Best Actress in a Drama, and her co-lead Pedro Pascal was nominated for Best Actor. Jenna Ortega was nominated for Best Actress in a Comedy. Also, Elizabeth Moss was honored for Hulu's The Handmaid's Tale. In addition, The Last of Us heavily dominated the Guest Actor categories, Murray Bartlett, Nick Offerman, and Kevon Montreal Woodard all picked up guest actor nominations, while Melanie Linsky, Storm Reed, and Anna Torv all received guest actress nods. But many also hoped for nominations for Emmy Darcy and Patty Considine for their performances in Dragon, and Diego Luna for Andor. Yet Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power was notably snubbed from the major categories despite being the most expensive TV series ever made and submitting in 22 categories. Aww. No doubt the head of Amazon Studios, Jennifer Salky, is the one who went overboard in trying to draw attention to their failed Rings of Power series. The Rings of Power was being for outstanding drama series, writing, directing, supporting actor, with Ismail Cruz Cordova and Owen Arthur, and actress Morbid Clark, Sophia <laughs> Nomvet, yet came up short in those categories. The series did, however, gain some recognition in some of the more technical categories, earning nominations for outstanding sound editing, makeup, costumes, visual effects, and title design. 
Those are all actually consolation nominations for the Utterly Abominable series. At a cost of around $500 million for its debut season, The Rings of Power was a major gamble for Prime Video, but it struggled in the wake of HBO's behemoth Game of Thrones and its prequel House of the Dragon to capture the same sort of critical ratings and cultural impact as other fantasy hits. Likewise, Disney Plus's The Mandalorian was also snubbed following its lackluster third season, despite previously breaking into the drama series category for its first two. So Mando also garnered consolation nominations for many technical awards, including several for sound, along with stunts, costumes, makeup, and direction. The third season of The Mandalorian was total crap, as I had talked about in a video that I had released back in April. Dragon, The Last of Us, and Andor face steep competition in the drama category, going up against HBO heavy hitter Succession, along with AMC's Better Call Saul, Netflix's The Crown, Hulu's Yellow Jackets, and HBO's The White Lotus. And all of those shows share one thing in common. They're all at least 10,000 times better than Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. The Emmys are scheduled to be on TV on September 18th, but could be impacted if the actors go on strike. I never personally watch the Emmys, but I'm thrilled that Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power was deemed unworthy of any significant awards, especially for writing. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.